today we are going to talk about the organizational structure of a company. There are two types of organizational structures, which includes formal organization and informal organization. First, I am going to discuss about formal organization. The term formal organization refers to the official structures of command and control that exist in an organization. There is always a formal organization in each organization. For example, the Board of Governors, Senior Managers, Middle Managers, and etc. are part of the formal organization in our school. In the formal organization, authority is delegated from senior to middle to junior management. Each level of management will tend to have written or unwritten rules that outline what can, be, uh, what can and cannot be done at each level. An informal organization refers to the unofficial organization of personal and social relations that develop in an organization. In an informal organization, power comes from informal groups in the organization. Since the informal organization does not officially exist, it is difficult to identify and there are no rules or individuals that can be officially identified as representatives. The formal organization will feature delegation, which means passing authority to a subordinate, to those subordinate in a manager's span of control, those the manager has official authority over. It's worth noting that the person who delegate the work remains accountable for the outcome of the work. As the formal organization grows, the hierarchy will become apparent. This hierarchy is the system of ranking people in an organization. It can link people either directly or indirectly, and vertically and horizontally. This is a hierarchical structure. This shows that the people at the lower level will report directly to the people that are one level higher than them, which is known as the line manager. A line manager is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the people, known as subordinates, who are directly on the next level down the hierarchy. Hierarchical structures can be described as being either flat or tall. Tall structures have many layers in the organizational hierarchy. Therefore, it is likely that each manager will tend to have a narrow span of control. By contrast, in flat structures, there are fewer levels in the hierarchy. Thus, each manager will tend to have a wider span of control. The chain of command is the line of authority and responsibility along which orders are passed in a formal organization. Instructions are passed down the organization until they are received by those who are expected to carry them out. Empowerment means that the company is providing the means by which the individual employees can exercise control over their working arrangements. Bureaucracy refers to the execution of tasks that are governed by official, administrative, and formal rules of an organization. Bureaucratic organizations are characterized by prescribed rules and responsibilities, sanitized procedures, and formal hierarchy structures. Many large businesses have opted to delay their organizations. Delayering is the process of removing one or more levels in the hierarchy or in order to flatten out the organizational structure. This will therefore reduce the number of layers of management and will widen the span of control. Delayering is often associated with downsizing. This happens when the size of the core workforce is reduced. This can further reduce a firm's cost because there are fewer core staff who are remunerated on full benefits, such as statutory sick pay, holiday pay, and contractory pensions. Downsizing can lead to more flexible working practices, as businesses hire more prohibitive and contractual workers. These people are not entitled to the same remuneration as core full-time staff. Centralization means concentrating decisions making in a particular location or group. If the decisions in your school are predominantly made by one group or location, then the decision making could reasonably be described as highly centralized. As shown in the figure, decisions are made through the person in the center, without any form of communication between other members of the organization. In contrast, decentralization is when decision making is largely dispersed to outlying bits of the organization. If a school allows different parts of the organization to make substantial decisions about the things like uniforms, activities, subjects, and how they are taught, then decision making is highly decentralized. Accountability is the term used to describe the extent of which a person is held responsible for the success or failure of a task. 
Having a clear organizational structure allows workers to see who is held accountable for which functions and which terms. Accountability allows senior managers to have better control over the running over their organizations. Those who have achieved or exceeded their targets are recognized for their accomplishments. However, those who fail to meet deadlines or targets can be identified and held accountable for their mistakes. The matrix structure refers to the flexible organization of employees from different departments within an organization temporarily working together on a particular project. Therefore, in a matrix structure, functional departments will exist except a team of workers, known as the project team, has the opportunity to work on projects with colleagues from other departments. Each project team is led by a team leader or project manager. This means that each member in the matrix is held accountable in two managers, the departmental manager and the project manager. This figure shows that the team members communicate using an all-channel network rather than the traditional channels of communication and fire and hierarchical structures. The formal organization of staff is shown in an organizational chart. However, relationships also exist beyond the formal groups that are established by a business. And formal groups within a business consist of people who have become friends and or share similar interests. This is rather similar to schools where students are placed in form groups, which is a form organization, but arrange friendship groups of their own with people who are not in the tutor group, which is an informal organization. The organization gets a sub-coordinator to undertake part of its production process. It is called outsourcing. Examples are when Nike gets another company to manufacture its products, or Coca-Cola appoints a marketing agency to market its range. Focus on what it believes it does best. Toyota Motor Company has been described as a car assembler rather than a manufacturer because so many of the components in these cars are made by subcontractors. The relocation of an organization's activities from one country to the another is called offshoring. Many organizations have relocated their activities to India and China to take advantage of much lower production costs.